I want to be at the meeting. Let me say, I'm going to be at the meeting. And that meeting is the meeting with Jesus at the beam of judgment. And everybody that's that's been born again, when he come, Amen. will be with him at the beam of judgment, which will be the meeting for all saints. Amen. There won't be no general meeting for all people. <coughs> There's going to be two resurrection, one for the righteous Amen. and one for the unsaved. Amen. The beam of judgment is for the righteous. Amen. The great white throne judgment is for the unsaved. Amen. I'm not going to be there. Because I have received Jesus Christ as my Savior. The only way a sinner can be saved is through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. Time is not going to do it. Some folks say, well, you know, give me a little more time <laughs> so I can put down this and put down that. Still won't work. Amen. Except Jesus Christ is safe and then he give you the power yes, yes, to say no to the world yes. and always yes to him. Yes. Amen. Amen. So many people are confused about this life. There's no mixture of his life with the world. They used to say when I was a younger man, you can't straddle the fence. Amen, They said, boy, you're going to tear your pants. Or your britches. <laughs> Amen. So you're going to be on one side or the other. Be sure you're on the side with Christ. Because what he's doing is working out of his great love to get people saved. Religion not going to do it. Only Jesus. Turn to uh, Philippians chapter 4. <clears throat> I'm one of his servants, so I just have to represent him and tell you what he says. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through verse 7. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. <clears throat> rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be made, be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus, the Word of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the Lord has approved of me to talking to you about God's guidelines for the saints. God's guidelines for the saints. <laughs> Accepting Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord mean we'll be saved from our sins. Because our sins are going to take us to hell. Amen. And uh, when he saves an individual, the individual cannot assume now he's free to do whatever he wants to do. 
or whatever she wants to do, there are some guidelines. And they are for the individual's good. God always works for our individual's good. And he says in his word here, notice the first thing he says, when, when, a, when a man, woman, boy, or girl have been saved, they ought to rejoice in the Lord. I said they ought to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. I'm not talking about putting on no show. Amen. I'm talking about genuinely rejoicing in the Lord because <coughs> of what he has done for you. Shouting hallelujah. Amen. And uh, telling them thank you. Amen. Telling them thank you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And remember this, thanksgiving makes room for other blessings. If you're not grateful to God for what He's already done for you, that tells Him you don't qualify to receive some more from Him. Amen. But being thankful, and you express that not only with your mouth but with your life. I thank God for saving me. I don't just say it. Others know it. By the way I talk, by the way I live, where I carry myself, they know that uh, that I'm not like the world. Amen. So he said, rejoice in the Lord. Catch that in the Lord. Not in yourself. In the Lord. Always. And Paul put the emphasis on it again. And I say, rejoice. That's what he tells us to do. If you're not excited about what you said the Lord have done for you, how are you going to convince others to accept it? You ought to be happy every day. You don't have to wait till you get to the church house to rejoice. You, you can rejoice driving in your, in your car, but just keep your hands on the wheel. <laughs> You, you, you can don't do like foolish individuals where I can just rejoice and shout turn the wheel loose God gonna take care of me you go into the ditch amen <laughs> you, 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 amen you can praise God without turning the wheel loose in your heart and then again you don't tempt God so many believers violate God's rules uh, out, of, out of what it appears to be good intention. But then when God teaches you, then do the right thing. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. Be happy about what the Lord has done for you. Joy in the Lord expresses to others that he has changed you. That he has changed you. He says, rejoice. Are you a rejoicing person? Amen. <laughs> Are you a rejoicing or are you a complaining person? Are you a rejoicing person? Amen. Some people spend a lot of time complaining. Amen. About things they don't have. I don't have this and I don't have that. I don't have this and I, I'm not like other folk. He didn't make you be like other folk. And if you be faithful to him, he'll bless you in his time. In his own season. Because he says, you know, my time not like your time. My thoughts are not your thoughts, you see. So that's what you have to accept. Some people get impatient with God and they're going to try to do something on their own. But you have to rejoice regardless of your state, your, your standing. Be grateful to him for what he's already done. Yeah, Let your moderation be made known unto men. Oh, man, you, 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 you express God's kindness to others. Be nice to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Be gentle with everybody. Don't be harsh with nobody. <coughs> no matter how harsh they may be towards you, but you be gentle with them. You be, you, you be nice. That's right. Because you represent him. You, you, you may feel like you're getting back at somebody, but you're getting over on yourself when you try to 
you rough with people. You you just be nice. They they may talk nasty about you, but you be nice because you are to represent Jesus Christ. God guidelines say that you've got to be sure you represent Him. Amen. Be nice to everybody. Let it be known to all men. He said, "Lord, that hand." Don't you think he's somewhere waiting to meet you again when you come back here next Sunday? If you've been born again, and he watches everybody, all people, but especially the saints. He keeps his eye upon us. You you remember that? And uh, he, he he's, he's when you leave here today, he. You said, well, then when I get back next Sunday, I'm going to tell them this and I'm going to tell them that. Tell them every day. And in fact, he wants you to have faith in him. Sometimes God lets you get in a certain condition, a certain faith, certain circumstance to test your faith. And if you falter, then you're going to miss out on his blessing. Did you hear me? Sometimes he lets you get into a certain predicament and face certain circumstances to test your faith. Amen. See what you'll do when you when you don't have what you think you need. What will you do? He's looking right at you. Did you hear me? Because if you're going to trust him with, uh, with what you already have, what you going to do when he give you more? Did, did you catch that? Right. <laughs> listen, listen to me, man. He has some guidelines for our lives. So we have to rejoice in the Lord because he's, he's present. Didn't he say, I'll never leave you? Okay. Nor forsake you. And David says, it, it was all his life, really. He, he said, I've been young, but now I'm old. Psalm 37, 25. He said, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed, that's the children and grandchildren, forsaken. So it, 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 it does the righteous a lot of good if the righteous be what he or she ought to be. Because God will remember the offspring. He'll be gracious to them because the righteous stood for him. Did you hear me clear? God is so kind to us. He, he says he's at hand. Do you believe that? He said, and lo, I am with you. But you got to be doing what he tell you. Matthew 28. You remember that? He said, you teach them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I'm with you. That's why I stick with the Bible. Amen. Amen. Well, I stick with the word of God. There have been people down through the years, some of them didn't like it. He wanted me to tell them something that make them feel good. Amen. And stay off of their toes. Uh -huh. But I works for the heart. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Because I want people to know him and then to live according to his guidelines. He says in his word, and you need to read Matthews of five sometime. And uh, those beatitudes are attitudes that ought to be in you. You can put that in Matthew 5, 1 through 11. Those attitudes are attitudes you ought to have. Anytime you show an attitude that's not in the beatitude, you're wrong. Is there another amen? amen? That's what he says. Amen. And that's what he means. And if you do it his way, things will be so better for you. Amen. Do anybody believe that? Amen. He said, let it be made known. That other people ought to know that you're a child of God other than when they come and see you singing. Amen. 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 I would tell people not to be surprised when they come and see me and I'm in the pulpit. And they saw whispering. You know, I didn't know he was a preacher. 
They don't know everywhere I go that I'm a child of God. Amen. And if God now people, they'll just recognize me as a preacher. Amen. Don't know my name or nothing. You won't be on the How do you know that? Well, God has a way. He shows us in your life, amen, in your smile, in your being nice to people. Good morning, how you doing? Now, whether they white or black, have a good day. Even the cashier said sometimes, I said, I, I almost said thank you before she said thank you. Did you see me going to say, what you think of me? I said, thank you for being nice to me. He wants you to be nice to everybody. Amen. And so his, in the guidelines, here's something else you want to know in verse 6. Keep in mind, he's watching everything. Be careful for nothing. That means, don't you get over anxious. That's one of the guys. Don't you get over anxious about life. So you don't have this and you don't have that yet, but don't get over anxious. Because I'm a witness, if you get over anxious, you'll do some things out of fear. Amen. A lot of people in debt because they got over anxious out of fear. Amen. And they've been, I've said to the Lord, I'm sorry. Yeah. When I was much uh, younger and wasn't as strong in faith, made some decision out of anxiety and out of fear. And it took me a while to get from under it. When all I had to do is trust him, but I got over anxious. Amen, Pastor. I got to do this and I got to do that. And all what I had to do, God expected me to trust him. Amen. Amen. But you know, we think sometimes we got to fix this. Amen. And when you get on your own, you're going to be on your own. Amen. Can everybody say amen now? Amen. Don't, don't be anxious about nothing. Be careful for nothing, he said. Amen. I mean nothing. nothing. Don't be careful for nothing. Stay in God's will. That's from the youngest to the oldest of us here this morning. Stay in God's will. Be careful for nothing. Don't get over anxious. And don't, don't try to do it yourself. And things going to work out for you. But in everything. Look at this now. In everything. <coughs> somebody say everything. everything. In everything. Amen. By prayer. And prayer is communion with God. Amen. Prayer is not just uh, trying to impress nobody or saying a word because you memorized it. Prayer uh, must be empowered by the Holy Spirit if it's going to be effective. Romans 8, 26. We know not how we ought to pray without the Holy Spirit. And when a person submits to the Lord, he helps them. Yes. You can't be stubborn. You can't have an upper attitude. You can't think that you, you know how to do it because you read upon it. No matter how much you read, you need the Holy Spirit to help you. And he's going to help you to do it God's way. Anybody doing it that way, they're not being led by the Holy Spirit. Can anybody say amen? Got to, got to do it God's way. Anybody go against what the Bible teaches, they are not being led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't care who it is. Right. If they go against what the Bible teaches, they are not being led by the Holy Spirit. All right. Everybody that's led by the Holy Spirit, they're going to obey the Bible. Amen. Can anybody say amen? amen? If they get in self, then they're not going to obey God. <coughs> if any man would come after me, Luke 9, 62. Let him do what? Take up his cross. Not sometimes. And follow me. Is that what he said? So every person has to deny himself or herself every day of their life. This is, this is part of the guidelines he gives to deny yourself. Say no to yourself. And say yes to Jesus Christ. Amen. But pray, pray, and amen, and everything by prayer, everything by prayer. Some people don't know the value of praying. Only time it seems that some think it's important when they get a report from the doctor, so they got a bad case of something. 
But you ought to be praying when you're always up and about. Do you, believe, you ought to thank him anyway. You'll be praying, acknowledging him, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. What did he say? Trust in the Lord. Let me ask you now, have you been trusting him? Are you doing what he told you to do? And if you're not doing what he told you to do, you're not trusting him. Well, I trust him sometimes. Is he faithful to you all of the time? <laughs> and then if he's faithful to me all of the time, he expects me to trust him. Somebody say all the time. Ask somebody sitting beside and say, did you hear that? Now ask him this, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Prayer makes a difference. Amen. Prayer is just as important as you inhale and exhale. If God shut off the air from you, you die. Amen. That's the way prayer is. If you stop praying, you're not going to make it. Amen. And you don't have to have fear. Well, if I pray to God about it, he's going to tell me something else. You want him to tell you what's right. Amen. You want him to tell you what's right. Because he knows the best. So he says, in everything by prayer, then supplication. You, you'll not remember just yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you all remember other people Amen. Not me, myself, and I right. remember You remember others Amen. Others need your prayer too Because whether you know it or not Somebody prayed for you Amen. Somebody said grandmama Somebody prayed for you Lord take care of my child my son and my daughter. And if they're going to the the Lord, help them. Lord, keep your hand upon them. Help them to do what's right, Lord. Have mercy upon them. And Lord, if they're doing something wrong, help them to turn from it. You remember Job? That's what Job did. He prayed for his son and daughter just in case they had done something wrong. Lord have mercy. That's what parents have to do. Yeah, Husband and wife have to do is pray to God. And then pray for your friends. Your fellow workers, pray for them. And then he says, with thanksgiving. When you pray, you ought to thank God for something. For all he's done for you. Don't let your prayer just be about asking him for something. Let your prayer amen, include thanksgiving. And I know we're in that season now. Thank him. Thank him. Amen. Thank him for whatever you have. Whatever you have. If you don't have a turkey, thank him for your ham hocks. <laughs> Most likely somebody gonna get some of them. I, don't, I, you know, I say I don't care what they say about that pig, but <laughs> he just kind of make greens taste better, amen. <laughs> Amen. Hey. <laughs> Thank him for everything. Amen. Whatever you have, thank him for it. And then thank him for your life. Hey Amen. I, I, I'm a young senior citizen. <laughs> but, but I remember back then. And I was talking to my wife about it the other day because she just came back to me. My mama was no educated person. She didn't know how to read. Granddad raised me. He couldn't read very well, nothing. And I was in school. And I was one of the front row students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only on the child in the house. Yeah. 
was me. And granddaddy couldn't hardly read and mama couldn't read at all. So who helped me with my homework? The Lord. And again, I was one of the front, front row students, amen, in school. God did that. That's true. That's true. When I was in Hines, amen, I, that one day all of all the students, white and black, the, the white instructor said, only one student today in the class that made an A. And he said that was Robert. I said, wow. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it openly like that. I, I thought they were going to get mad with me, but they didn't. Yeah. You know, sometimes people get jealous of you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I finished with a 4.0. That's, that's not too bad. But I, I thought about it just the other day. I would tell my wife, but the Lord helped me. When I look back over that and see that, that I knew it. Because there wasn't nobody in my house to help me. Right. With my reading and my sign and my math problem. Right. And when you got into fraction, boy, you sure needed some help then. <laughs> Trick or nothing. You got into all that kind of stuff. You will need some help. Right. But the Lord. Right. And he brought it to my attention the other day. I said, I just wanted to mention this morning and tell him, thank you, Lord. Yeah. It was the Lord that helped me. I went home with my homework, and then Matthew 11 said, And lo, I'm not Matthew 20, I'm with you. In Matthew 11, beginning at verse, what's that, 28? Come unto me. Oh, just live in a heavenly, and I'll give you rest. Listen to him, take my yoke of born and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. Is that what it say? And I've told it before. Uh, Christ is the only one give you an assignment and then go home with you. <laughs> you can't beat that. He give you an assignment to go home with you and help you with your assignment. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah, amen. You wouldn't have made it to where you are if it hadn't been for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I thank him. Amen. He's so wonderful. Yes, he is. That, that song that was that somebody said, "Wonderful, God is so wonderful." The Lord is my shepherd; He's my guide. Whatever I need, the Lord will provide. Do you believe it? So He says here, "You give Him thanks," and then He says. His, his, his another part of that guideline. And let your requests be made known unto God. Some people tell all the other folk about their problem. They don't tell God nothing. <laughs> they go talk with this one and talk with that one and talk with this and call this and call that one. And God be just watching and listening. And some do, do they, when they finally come to themselves, <laughs> they do like the one with Israel blood. She had money. She went from one doctor to the next one. The doctors did all they could, but their medicine would do no good. And when she spent all she had on doctors, then she heard about Jesus. And, and she says within herself, if I can just... That's faith now. If I can touch, because of what she have heard, that means good talk about Jesus. Because what you say about Jesus affects the lives of other people. She had heard about it, and then she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Amen. She elbowed away, pressed the, through the crowd, got down and touched the hem of his garment. And in all that crowd, Jesus stopped. He said, somebody touched me. Yeah. 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 So I said, Lord, you mean to tell me all these folk around you? You talking about somebody touched you? He didn't say just anybody. He said, somebody touched me. 
Amen. And the woman came. She said it wasn't me. <laughs> told him what happened I touched and then the, the virtue came out and got in me and healed me of my blood disease she was hemorrhaging and it took it dried up yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> amen sometimes God lets us come to the point where we can't see nothing but him amen Doctors done written, they're written you off. Can't, then, then you finally look up. Yeah. He's been waiting all the time. He said, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's right. And the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises continue to be where? I mean, you got to say something. Man, this God said there are some folks say, well, I don't talk about my religion. I just live it. He says, shame on you. <laughs> he said, this is a talking religion. You, you have to be a witness for Christ. So he says, don't get over anxious for nothing and everything by prayer, supplication, amen, remembering others, and then with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Thank him for what he's already done for you. And then let your request be made known. Lord, I, I need you to do this. Right. I, got a, I got a loved one that's on the wrong road, Lord. Have mercy. And don't ask him if it's your will. <coughs> when you're talking about somebody getting saved. Paul wrote to Timothy, he says, not his will that any man should be Lord. But that all should be saved. Yeah. So you don't have to put that in when you're praying for the salvation of other people. Lord, if you will, would you save someone? No, it is his will. Yeah. Just ask the Lord to be gracious and touch him. Yeah. Touch him. This morning they may be in whatever city, but ask him to touch them. Then I come down to this is this is the this is the uh this is the dynamite of it here. He said, if you do all of this. Now you got to do what verse 4 says on down to here. 4 through 6, you got to do that. Then he says, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen for you. And the peace of God. <laughs> Somebody said peace of God. <laughs> and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Man can't figure it out. No matter how much education he's gotten from the school, he can't figure it out. How you can have trouble on hand, you still smiling. Amen. You still rejoicing. They heard about your fall, they, not in sin, but because you had something else to happen to you, amen. Your circumstances wasn't pleasant, and they heard all about that. Every time they see you, you just smile, and you just rest. Thank God for Jesus Christ. And they won't know, man, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with him? You're doing what the scripture told you to do. Is what he said? He said, when you do that, you can have the peace of God that passes all understanding. People can't understand why you can keep on carrying on. They, they, they heard about you don't have enough money to do that, and you're still happy. You see and saying the Lord going to make a way. He told me he'd do it. He said, if I seek his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things will be added to me. He said that, and I believe it. Paul said to the Philippians, he said this, amen, Philippians 4 and 19, he said, and my God, it's, it's, it's right there, and my God, when you have followed the rules, that what he said, but my God shall supply all of your needs. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Earth is as riches as it is because of heaven riches. Amen. God decided to let some of the riches of heaven come down to earth. For us, heaven is still rich. Yes. And if you be pleasing to him, I've said in the past, you got to be in good fellowship with the pastor keeper. Right. The storehouse keeper. Right. Do you hear me? Yes. 
<laughs> shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Listen to what he said. By who? Christ by Christ Jesus. It is Jesus that supplies our need. And God blesses you because of his son. Don't you ever think that it's because of you. It's because of his son. He see his son in your life and you trust him. And that, uh, I'm getting ready to get out of here now. You better follow me. His guideline. I'm going to read these. Let's turn to Colossians 3 now. Amen. He talks about the way you used to live down to verse 7. But look at verse 8. It's on in verse 8. Saints been so deceived. And it's not just going to happen. The saints have to intentionally and, pre, uh, amen, pre, prepare to obey God. Look what he said. Paul said to the Colossians, but now in all these put off all these. Do you see that? Yeah. A saint can't go around angry, yeah. wrathful, malice holding stuff against folk. Blaspheme and filthy communication out of your mouth. Is that what he says? Amen. Can't do it. Lie not one to another, saying that you have put off the old man with his deeds. That's the old lifestyle. I, I took him off. And I left him wherever I took him off it. <laughs> And I'm not going to put him back on. Mm. Amen. With his deeds, amen. Yes. And have put on the new man which is renewed. That's Jesus Christ. And have put on the new man which is renewed in what? That's why you ought to stay on the teaching of the word. Because you say you're not going to know it just by yourself. You have to be taught the word of God in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. After Jesus Christ is the very image of God Almighty. So when you do the things that Christ wants you to do, then, amen, God's image becomes, amen, develop, it develops in you when you obey Jesus Christ. Because he wants some lookalikes. Amen. Romans 8, 29. God wants some lookalikes. I'm still in Colossians now. Make no difference what <coughs> race you of, no matter how long you've been in the church, where well, there's neither Greek nor Jew, Circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, born or free, but Christ is all and in all. Everybody been born again, Christ lives in them. Yeah. Yeah. One race don't have nothing on, on the other one. Jews don't have nothing on us. Amen. Amen. We're pleasing to him by faith. Yeah. We're Abraham's children by faith. Did you hear me? He said, now here's something else. Put on therefore as the elect of God. You got to be holy. Yes. Holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. You got to be kind from within. Yes. Humbleness, don't get lifted in pride. Meekness and long suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man or woman have a quarrel against, against any. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Ask your neighbor again. Did you hear that? Yeah. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Forgiveness is a big thing for some people. <laughs> Come down, verse 14. And above all these things, put on charity. That's love, which is the bond of perfectness. You can't, you can't be what well, God wants you to be without his love in your life. Here, here, here it is. I'm coming to this word. And let the peace of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. You heard for Philippians say it, didn't he? You got to let it. Amen. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye what? Whoo. I read it before, but it just made my children run over me again. That touched me, amen. Be thankful. Verse 16 is what you would have won't get. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. 
teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Don't sing to impress nobody. Amen. I'm going to sing. I'm singing it to the Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord knows it. And there have been people that they've looked at me. One one relative said to me once years ago, I was uh, singing a song in Jackson, and uh, she came up to me with her with her high attitude and says to me, "I can sing. I can sing good as you." I said, "Okay." This is one of my relatives. I said, "Okay, that's all right." But keep in mind, he says the sermon said, "Let us make a joy for Noah." Amen. He ain't said nothing about how you sound. <laughs> Let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Don't you be shy with somebody who's hearing you sitting beside. You make a joyful noise yourself. Amen. Somebody say he can't keep a note no matter what. You can, you can tie it on him and he couldn't keep it, amen. But let me tell you one thing. Make a joyful noise. Amen. Amen. Knowing how to sing is really knowing how to submit to the Lord, amen. Whatever you do, Paul said, do it to the glory of God. Amen. Whether you eat or drink, do it all to the glory of the Lord. And the Bible says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts. Do you see that? And mine. That's in your thinking. Amen. That's in your innermost Desires and feelings. He'll keep you. Do you believe it? The Lord will keep you. But you got to follow the guidelines. Follow the guidelines. I hope nobody will call you when they leave here. I heard what the pastor said, but it's just so hard to do some of that stuff. No, if somebody do, they say, well, let me tell you what the Bible said, you got to do it. <laughs> You got to obey it. Get the pastor talking about forgiving everybody. He don't know how I've been treated. You got to forgive him. Because he said, if you don't forgive him, I won't forgive you. I let it go. I let the credit go. I just go on and say, Lord, thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I thank God for his guidelines for our lives. Quiet, going to sing. You ought to give it all to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And thank him. Trust me.